Hello, my name is Brianna Guthrie, and today I will be speaking about a very fascinating species. For this presentation, I was asked to speak about an arthropod that was not an insect and that lives in an extreme environment. The purpose of this presentation is to prove that the Himalayan jumping spider has the most efficient anatomy to survive high altitudes. So let's begin. The Euphrys omnisuperstase, also known as the Himalayan jumping spider, is a member of Phylum arthropodia. The species name omnisuperstase means standing above all, which suits this species best since they are located in rocky debris in elevations up to 22,000 feet inside the Himalayas, including Mount Everest. However, this species can be found throughout the world in places like Europe, the Americas, Asia, Africa, and Australia. The females of this species have a total body length of about five millimeters, while the males being slightly smaller at about four millimeters or less. Both sexes are generally dark brown in color with some paler and whitish hairs and a metallic sheen on their head. However, the males tend to be darker and the abdomen uh, is black rather than brownish black. Now let's talk about some of the general characteristics that Himalayan jumping spiders have that distinguish them as members of phylum arthropodia. The first characteristic is that they are coelomates, meaning that they have a true body cavity that contains all the, or, uh, all the organism's vital organs. They also have bilateral symmetry, meaning that both the right and left side of the body are symmetric. Next is all spiders have segmented bodies in the sense that they are separated by their abdomen and cephalothorax. Another general characteristic of arthropods is that they have jointed appendages that are attached to their exoskeleton for flexibility and movement. The last general characteristics of all arthropods is that they all have an open circulatory system. This means that instead of a closed circulatory system, of interconnected veins and capillaries, and arthropod's blood is pumped through open spaces called sinuses in order to reach tissues. And as you can see on the figure on the right, this is the anatomy of a spider. And you can see the cephalothorax, which contains the head and mouth parts, and then the the um, lower part of the body contains all of the uh, reproductive systems, digestive glands, intestines, and ovaries. What makes the Himalayan jumping spider so interesting? Uh, what makes these spiders so interesting is that they are able to reach these high altitudes and thrive in this extreme environment. Himalayan jumping spiders are able to accomplish this because of the small body, which allows them from, to jump from place to place and climb higher into the mountains without being weighed down by a ton of body mass. The Himalayan jumping spider's lungs also play a big role in their ability to live at such high altitudes. A jumping spider's respiratory system is combined of book lungs and a tracheal system known as bimodal breathing. These spiders take in oxygen from the air into their book's lungs and the tracheal system transports the oxygen throughout the body. This adaptation for these jumping spiders allows them to efficiently get more gas exchange through utilizing both the tracheal system and their book's lungs, even at high altitudes. What is considered unique or unusual about the Himalayan jumping spider is that they have a much smaller body than other species of spiders. And these spiders have shorter legs than other spiders. Another form that is unique to the jumping spider is their eye arrangement. Jumping spiders have four eyes on the front of their face and the other four are located on the dorsal surface of their cephalothorax. What is even more unusual about these spiders eyes, eye arrangements is that Two center eyes, the two center eyes is even bigger than the rest of their eyes. Uh, 
thus giving them an alien-like look. So as you can see um, in the pictures on the presentation, I have a at the top a picture of a Himalayan jumping spider. And as you can tell, the two center eyes are much bigger than the, the others that surround the cephalothorax. Now, as you can see, the, the Himalayan jumping spider is much smaller than the brown recluse that is at the bottom of the presentation. And the legs on the brown recluse are also a lot longer than the Himalayan jumping spider. This is because the short body and short legs allow the Himalayan jumping spider to jump and jump a lot higher than um, a brown lacoose would because their legs are so much longer and their body is so much bigger. Next is the unusual function of these jumping spiders. The unusual function is that, of course, they jump. Most spiders typically do not have the ability to jump. Rather, they crawl on surfaces or the silk that they spin. This unusual function allows the Himalayan spires to live in high altitudes that have steep inclines, such as the Mount Everest. As you can tell in the picture, there is a lot of high inclines and not a lot of things uh, where you can grasp onto. Therefore, by the Himalayan jumping spider's ability to spin a line and attach to one object and then jump to another object and keep that line there allows them to act as if they are mountain climbers and uh, climb up and down these uh, very extreme inclines on these mountains. How do form and function relate? For, uh, the form of having such a smaller body and shorter legs allows the Himalayan jumping spider to move quicker and more efficient rather than crawling up steep inclines or crawling down deep holes, which was demonstrated in the slide before. The ability to jump also helps when it comes to catching prey and being able to chase prey and reach them through jumping. The form of the unusual eye arrangement of the jumping spiders and the function of jumping are related in the sense of catching prey by how the center eyes focus on chasing the prey while the other eyes around the cephalothorax um, are used for navigating while tracking and being able to focus on things around them as well as the prey, which is very crucial when it comes to having to jump over objects while chasing a, uh, another species. An example of the jumping spider's ability to chase and catch prey through jumping can be seen in this picture to the right where this jumping spider is jumping to reach um, this prey um, and he uses it from jumping from the tree at the far right and jumping onto that flower where the, the fly is. In conclusion, the anatomy of the Himalayan jumping spider is adapted specifically to be more efficient in hunting in high altitudes. By having a smaller body, shorter legs, and a double respiratory system allows for the spider to run and jump for long periods of time without being weighed down by its body mass or need to take in more oxygen. The spider's eye arrangement benefits its ability to jump by how the spider is able to focus on what is right in front of them and what is around them in their environment at the same time. Therefore, resulting in the Himalayan jumping spider having the most efficient anatomy to survive high altitudes. Lastly, here's a list of my references of information and images that I use throughout this presentation.